Okay. So our second speaker is Hisham Muhammad, and he will be talking about a uh, package manager for modules in the Lua programming language. Thank you. Uh, hello, I am Hisham, and today we'll be talking about uh, Lua Rocks and the process of developing uh, an ecosystem for uh, Lua modules. So, well, to get things started, uh, general introductions. So, what is Lorox, as, as he mentioned? So, it's a package manager, you know, not unlike uh, other package managers for Linux distros, and also package managers that are language specific, like RubyGems, Python, and so on. Uh, specifically for the Lua programming language, right? So, we're talking about modules that are either written in Lua itself, so Lua files, or modules typically written in C. I don't maybe C++ or other languages, but binary modules that will be the dynamically load libraries. So, and so what specifically do I mean by fostering an ecosystem? Right? Uh, today we'll be talking about some specific challenges that are related to uh, targeting Lua as a language and also dealing with Lua as a community. How was it to, like, get things started, and some maybe general lessons learned about building an ecosystem, which is sometimes something that you want to develop around your project. Um, so just for me to get an idea, uh, how many of you are familiar with Lua? Oh, excellent, like most people, uh, great. So I usually have like this one slide introduction to Lua, uh, which is just a small piece of code uh, with a bit of, that kind of represents the general looks of the language, right? It's, of course, it's very superficial to talk about a language based on its looks, but essentially, as most of us know, so Lua, we have to, do, we can deal with things like objects, but that look like objects. Uh, we have first class functions, and well, for with those functions and things like that, with those objects, we can build iterators and things like this. It's a, Right? But in fact, the defi defining aspect of Lua is that basically it has a single data structure, that's the table, which is at the same time an associative array and can be used as a vector. So uh, tables, tables everywhere. Our, our modules, our tables, our, we have over there our, our data structures and so on. Well, uh, Lua itself is a peculiar free software project. Uh, so dealing with uh, building an ecosystem around it uh, has some uh, unique challenges. Uh, well, it, is, it was developed as an academic project, uh, right, related uh, to a specific like, in-house project for the Brazilian oil company that eventually became an open source project. So it has a 20 year history. It is an open source project but it is developed in a like open source but closed development way because essentially the, the professors themselves, they, they do the development, write all the code and like publish regular releases. So it's the development of the core virtual machine itself is not a, a, a very community project. At the same time, the community that has developed around Lua, it's a, a pretty peculiar one as well. well. First of all, because Lua is very successful as an embedded language, as, but in those environments, you usually have very custom environments, right? Say, uh, for as an extension language for Wikipedia and for Lua tags, and especially in its niche that it ended up finding as uh, a scripting language in the gaming industry, whereas you can find Lua basically like in all kinds of games. But those are usually one-shot projects; they are proprietary and. Developers just stick to a specific Lua version and they do their own modifications and add-ons for one game obviously don't work in anywhere else. It's not just reusable, shareable code generally. So we have lots and lots of lots of Lua users out there, but it's apparently it seemed that each one of them was just doing their own thing. Right? And Lua itself is a peculiar language in that sense. Well, because it is super lightweight, it's designed for embedding, it basically it adapts itself very easily to your project's API, right? But th then it doesn't provide many APIs of its own, right? It's the typical like batteries not included language, right? So 
well, then you have to add your batteries, right? If you're in a, embedded into an application, well, the batteries are your application. But what if, if you want to develop a new application using Lua as a base? Well, then you're supposed to fill this gap using modules. Well, but where are the modules? So that's a situation that we were in, right? And based off all this minimalistic design of Lua, then we started to have some funny side effects of having a minimalistic language. Well, first of all, we didn't really have a module culture and modules were scattered around. And you would hear developers saying, well, just get it from my site, you know, go there and you didn't have to like go hunting over the, through the web. Uh, we didn't really have a standard build system, right? Because sometimes developers would say, well, my module is just a C file. You know, you know how to deal with a C file, right? Yes. Just compile it, and then, and then people will go, well, but it doesn't build in my machine. And then it will say, well, just tweak the make file, you know, and, and things like that, right? And, and, and some people sometimes in the list even go and say, no, it's better like, to tweak things by hand than to have you know, uh, an automated system or things like that. And in the end, that developed uh, the so-called uh, DIY, do-it-yourself culture. You know? So uh, every time we used to see in the mailing list, like, Go on, create your own little object system, you know, based on abstractions for tables and closures and things like that. But in the end, you would see like people over and over, and I'm looking at Pierre over there because we have discussed this in previous Lua workshops, you know. And each one, like they would develop like their own JSON parser, their own serialization library, their own this, their own that, and everyone had their own copy of everything, right? So, and and, and in fact, well. It, it was a slow development, but maybe it's hard to read down here, but like, as a side note, like Lua only got modules in version five, like after 10 years of existence, because it was mostly only used as an embedded language before. So, uh, so around 2006 and onwards, uh, back in Brazil, we started a research project uh, outside of the core Lua team, basically to develop uh, a platform for, well, the, the original goal was web development, so this was the Kepler project. For, so we ended up developing like lots of bits and pieces, right? Lots of, lots of components, which had the end goal of enabling like the development of web applications and trying to expand Lua for other niches. And in the end, we developed, and like the, all of the people involved in the project, they ended up developing like many useful modules, you know, like Lua file systems, which adds the known portable file system management fa facilities that the core doesn't have, and like SQL and so on. Well, since we started to have a bunch of modules, then it was like the, it was time to, uh, for the missing link, you know, then, okay, because dealing with all those modules started to become unwieldy. So, well, basically, enter Lua Rocks. So it was the missing link, a package manager. So the initial goal was to build and develop Kepler modules, like for Unix and Windows. That's what I was originally involved with. And then it grew from there. Like the, so the original goal was like to maybe package like two dozen modules and things like that, right? But over time, we wanted people to really use, because we knew that there was lots and lots of code out there that could be packaged and could be made easier for people to use. So it's. So throughout its long history, we went like through a long development and learned a few things. So what's, what's the current status of Lua Rocks? Well, it exists, it works, and now you can have your batteries for Lua, right? And get all the nice little things that you want, but doesn't come with the core language. Basically, so uh, like, so like it's, it's really like up and running one slide. Get, here we go, like from their machine, you get Lua, you download it, you install it, you download Lua Rocks, and you install it. It's like the typical configure, make, make, install procedure. Here I'm doing make bootstrap instead of make, make, install, because I am installing Lua Rocks as a rock itself. So next time you can just go like Lua Rocks, install Lua Rocks, and upgrade to the latest version. Well, if you were to download it, you would type configure, and then make, it would, it would give you the two options. It would say make by itself only gives a message saying, well, I'll type make build if you want to like if you were a distro maintainer and if you want to make like build a system-wide package or make bootstrap if you want to have it installed as a rock itself. You know, so basically that would be if you were leaving to, the, to your distro packet manager to, uh, 
if you were a distro maintainer, if you were to build a package, then you wanted the distro package manager to take care of upgrades, or if you want to have it upgrade itself. And then once you download Lua, it's running. So Lua's based, Lua rocks based on the concept of rocks and rock specs. Rock is the package file, and the rock spec is the rule file, which is, of course, a Lua meta file, or the dec declarative one. So we started to address the lack of standards. Speaking of those challenges, uh, remember the people who say, like, it's just a C file, tweak to make file. When we developed Lua rocks, there were people were using all sorts of build systems, sometimes nothing at all. And our solution was to be like Lua, to adapt to the developer's environment. We end up, we came up with various build backends. So basically, you go to the build section and you use like type and you say make, I'm using make files, or cmake, I am using cmake. And, but in fact, like people either use like half, you know, half baked make files, right, or they use nothing at all. So we decided to come up also with a built in mode where Lua Rocks itself would compile your C files and, and find libraries and like pass flags and do all those things. And that ended up becoming really popular because people really didn't want to write half-baked make files. You know, they just wanted to write the simplest thing that could possibly work. So if you're already using Lua Rocks, then the simplest thing is just to declare here where are, which are your Lua and C files and let Lua Rocks take care of the rest. And, and in fact, 75% of all Rocks really use this mode. Well, for the module repository, it ended up affecting like lots of things for develop both, both developers and users. It changes the workflow. It changes how users set up the environment, and people end up like. But at the same time, users are developers too, because if you are like loading Lua modules, well, you're supposed to program with it. Thing about bootstrapping a repository, well, we start with phase one, which was the curated repository. People would email me their their rock specs. I would check them. I would help them out. I started with the Kepler ones, and now we've moved to phase two, which is. The Moon Rocks repository, which we hope will eventually become Blue Rocks Arc itself, right? And which gives greater developer autonomy. You can create an account, upload stuff, and get your rocks out there without, you know, having to go through anyone else. Phase four is, of course, profit, and phase three, who knows? So, what was the effect? So, this is the recent growth of the repository. Right? And we've had we've been using Moon Rocks as the default repository since August. Right, and we can already feel the effects that this has had on the repository as a whole. So we came up in, now that we have lots of modules, that became a virtuous circle. So we started to break the whole do-it-yourself, which is also kind of not invented here, culture. So instead of people like creating their own the stuff from scratch all the time, now it's just easier to go and fetch from Lurox. And in fact, our developers are users, and now we start to see like lots of projects that have like chains of dependencies that go uh, some levels deep. So people are using modules, which use other modules, which use other modules. Basically, like you see happening in every other language, right? So we started to build a culture with less reinvention of the wheel. And in fact, just to just take a quick look, like I decided, like last Sunday, I went through a Lua mailing list, and I said. Okay, let me check like the last, the last 10 announcements. You know, the latest 10 announcements. And basically like eight of them like either used Lua Rocks or mentioned it. They said, oh, I should have released it as a rock, right? And two, two of them didn't. So, so basically now the culture has shifted you know, and we really see that Lua Rocks has become the default way to release stuff in the Lua world. So now what have we achieved? Well, now we do have a one-stop shop repository, right? Instead of get from my site, people just go and Lua Rocks install. We do have a simple and popular build system, which covers like 75% of the cases. And in other ones, you can still use like your complex mail rules, which is like Lua Rocks build. And we start to have a better culture of code reuse, right? Instead of, you now you can go and Lua Rocks search JSON and, and see what are your options instead of, you know, just going straight to the specification and trying to hack your own. And of course, for those who don't want it, they can still do things the old hard way. So essentially, these are the lessons we learned. Well, it takes time to build an ecosystem, right? And you may need to bootstrap it to get it off the ground, 
right? You have to identify your audience, and you have to be bold and share control. So this is what I had to do for today. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can meet the speaker at the front. So. Oh yeah, we will have a bird of feather room uh, for Lua at 11. You can check the room number outside here at the, because I don't remember it. 